Good evening. Those of you who come in late, you have to get early to get a back seat. <laughs> There's always plenty of room at the front. Praise the Lord. Who has a praise report? Sandra? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've been hearing a lot of these healings. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, one of you is happy. Yeah, that's great. Congratulations. Another praise report. I brought three of my great grandkids to church tonight. Good. Uh, boys, you're challenging. <laughs> <laughs> but I praise God through them. Your mom and daddy will be in church. Amen. 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 Despise not the day of small beginnings. Amen. Who else? Well, stand with me. Can I share something? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I mean, I just can't even explain it to you without going into details, but Good. I just weep and weep and weep. It's like a joyful weeping. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Anybody else? Stand with me. <clears throat> I want to pray tonight for Ann Page. <clears throat> she has COVID and is not doing well at all. So we want to pray for her. And uh, Myrna, Bethany, Bethany is in the hospital. Let's pray that God will heal and give her a quick recovery. Karen's mom, her name's Dolores, and uh, let's pray for her. She's in a rehab center, and she's not being very cooperative. <laughs> so uh, they told her to get with it or they'll put her in a nursing home, so she's starting to get with it. for Jenny. Praise report. Uh, Becky Smith has been released from all of her tests and everything. They're, next month they're heading back to Kenya. So we praise the Lord for that. Anybody else? Jerry, come lead us in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our prayers. And, Lord, that it's always amazing that you, the Lord of the universe, have time for the prayers of your people. And you tell us to call out on your name. And your day of need and your day of praise, call out on me. And so we pray right now, Lord. You see these, Lord, who are facing cancer. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are the healer, the restorer. Cancer may be a part of this world a part of this reality but lord you are beyond you are the creator and we pray for healing and restoration we pray for those lord who are facing illness right now and the covid and other things lord heal and restore bring complete restoration of strength to their bodies we pray in jesus name and lord especially for those who don't know you these these family members these who are on the on the fringes on the edges lord jesus we ask lord god that you would speak to them, Lord, speak to them through your servants, speak to them through through the lives and through the words of those around them, Lord, speak to them through the healing and through the miracles that you're going to bring. Let your word be accomplished in each and every life, we pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen.
because of who you are, because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are and all you've done. Oh, Lord, I worship you because of who
Just take a minute, tell him in your own words how much he needs to you, how much you're thankful for his faithfulness. Come on, lift your hands to heaven and worship him. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. Exalt you.
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're sick in your body right now, I believe the Lord can touch you. If you need a healing, lift your hand where you are. Right here. Somebody lay hands on him right back there, Brother Ron. Lay hands on him. Right here. Bob. Who else? Anybody else? Lord, we command the body to respond to the word of the Lord that said, By his stripes we are healed. In the name of Jesus, we claim that healing in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We give you glory. We give you honor. We praise you for it, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, look at somebody and say, I believe God heard us and answered us. Amen. You may be seated. Ushers come. <coughs> During the month of June, most uh, churches kind of go into hibernation during the summer. We're not going to do that. Jesus said, lift up your eyes and see that the harvest is right. And so Sister Nancy is going to be teaching us uh, most of this month. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the increase, reach increase the reach I got it in my head somewhere <laughs> increase the reach and uh, I'm going to kick it off Sunday morning and uh, the title of my sermon is increase the reach no more excuses so I expect all of you to be here and bring somebody with you <laughs> uh oh yeah yeah forgot to reach huh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, be sure and uh, attend these next four weeks because God's going to touch us and challenge us. And uh, we're going to do our best to begin to be more impactful in our city and in our county. Amen. Then Saturday night, 7 o'clock, or 6 o'clock till 7, prayer meeting. 6 to 7, the hour of power. Amen. Well, Tonight, we got the champ, Rocky. Would you give a big welcome to Brother Rocky Farina? I'll tell you what, folks. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I mean, you can almost cut it with a knife. The glory of the Lord is here. And do you realize the possibilities and the things that can happen when Jesus shows up? He's always here. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And it so much depends on our response and our awareness to him. And you're doing just fine tonight. Just fine. You're responding to his presence. Can you feel it? Am I wrong? Am I sensing something? I mean, he's here. And I want us just to give him a great big I love you, Jesus. And will you stand one more time? And let's just praise him one more time. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Hallelujah. We 
We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Father, that wouldn't surprise me one bit, but that you're going to begin to heal the sick in this place tonight. You're going to fill people and refill people with the Holy Ghost for the glory of God's presence. Hallelujah. Because you're in this place, and we're so thankful for you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you, and we want to love you more. We pray together for our wonderful church. We thank you for one another. We thank you for our wonderful pastor. We thank you for our church staff. We give you praise for the Spirit of God and the blessings of the Lord in this place. But there's more. And more is on the way for the University Assembly of God. I believe that, Father. There's going to be triumph in the land in ways we've not even imagined. And I give you praise for it, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Don't sit down yet. Turn around and tell somebody that you're just so thankful for them. You're grateful. You're appreciative. It was in the uh, Philippine Islands, a fisherman, simple-minded man, actually found one day what looked like a very, very intriguing thing. He went fishing, and he found this giant clam. And he saw in that clam this beautiful stone. And it was, well, not so beautiful at first, but it turned out to be that way. And he looked at it, and he said, i got to keep this as a good luck piece, he said. So he did, took it home and hid it under his bed for 10 years. After 10 years had come, he needed to move. But now he's 10 years older, and that thing is heavy. So he had a relative, and he told his relative, I'm going to let you take care of this. You can have it. The relative was, a, was uh, from another island of the Philippines, and she took that stone and was intrigued as he was. Her name was Eileen Cynthia McGay Amarillo. She was a tourism officer for that island in Porto Principe of the island of Palawan. And uh, so she called in the men of knowledge concerning this thing. It's a true story. And they brought her friends in and these what do you call people who estimate the value of jewels and, and diamonds? Gemologist. Gemologist, that's what she was. Thank you, Pastor. And she said, uh, what do we got? They scrutinized that thing from top to bottom, and looked at it sideways, upside there, down every other way, and she, she said, they said, lady, you have got the world's largest pearl. It was right near 75 pounds, 170,000 carats. And are you ready for this? They estimated its value at $100 million. The old fisherman didn't know what he had. You know what? <laughs> For the longest time, and I don't say this critically, I say it somewhat appreciatively because we're hungry, we want to know more. But the church doesn't know what it has. Paul said it well, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man or the imagination of man, if you'll allow me to paraphrase, the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. And that's current. That's applicable today. The things that God has prepared for us, what we're experiencing right now in his presence is pure gold. It's marvelous. It feels so good, doesn't it? But it's just the beginning. I don't think we can imagine what God intends for us to have. I really don't. So we ask ourselves, what do we do concerning this thing? We rejoiced Sunday morning of that marvelous report, Pastor. You filled our hearts full of joy with those wonderful truths. 
we have come a long way, baby. We really have. Paying our bills. 120000 in the bank. Pizza's on pasture tonight. <laughs> and I say, that's marvelous. Paul told us what would happen in the last days, and I think we're going to contradict this, but you want to see 2 Timothy chapter 3. Because it tells us what we can look for in the last days, people who are lovers in themselves, who quarrel, who conflict, who run up once against another. In verses 4 and 5, he speaks of those who are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of self, or more than lovers of God, I mean, <laughs> having a form of godliness, verse 5, and divine, denying the power thereof. He said, from such turn away. You and I both believe that we're in the end times. We know that. We know we're there. Things that are going on around us are mystifying. Hard to know. Hard to call. You never know what's going to happen from day to day. I do believe there's two things going to happen simultaneously. I believe there is going to be a falling away, but there's also going to be a great revival. And I think we're on the edge of that great revival. There was a verse in the scriptures that so intrigued me out of the book of Luke, chapter 18, and this is my text, and hopefully will be yours for a long, long time. Jesus would say, we ought always to pray and not to faint. He wasn't the only one who said that. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul said, pray without ceasing. And then in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, again, Paul speaking, saying that we need to be praying with prayer and supplication in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. You, you look the scriptures over, you'll see where it insists that we pray always. We're going to look at Philippians 4 in just a minute where he says, don't worry about a thing, but in everything by, say it with me, prayer and supplication. Let your request, oh, don't forget one other thing. What am I missing there? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. I'll talk about that in a minute. Let your request be made known unto God. Am I scared by what's going on? I can't be. I know God and his divine sovereignty has everything in hand and under control. Am I worried? No, I'm not. Because I know God has us under control, come rich or poor, come for better or for worse. God's got us in his hand, and no man can pluck us out. I see that, I love it, and I praise God for that. But here's a question for you. Pray without ceasing. How do you do that? Nonstop prayer? That's what it is. That's what he's asking for. I have said, and I believe with all my heart, God wants our full attention. And God wants our affections as well. But the fact is, he has offered to us an opportunity that we can't afford to pass by. Complete control of our thoughts. He's offered us a glorious hope in that we have a line of communication with heaven to the glory of God. I think it's important for us to realize that when we pray, we are communing with God. It's conversation. We talk to him. We respond to us. He's here right now. He knows how to relate to our hearts. He knows everything that's going on inside us. A lot of times we pray somewhat futilely. We, think, we pray prayers God can't answer. God, be with me when I go to that place. Well, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. That's what he said. In fact, Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, he says, As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not leave thee nor forsake thee. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, you see where he says, I don't want you to be covetous. I want you to be content for I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. Promise of God. And you know Matthew 28, verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
This communication we have is a communication with God, and it is and needs to be remembered that it's a communication of joy, a channel of joy. That's what prayer is. So when we go before the Lord and we seek the face of the Lord, be it in a closet, be it in a church, wherever we're going to pray, he's going to be there. He's going to hear our prayer. And the thing he's going to look for is the joy of the Lord. Now, how do I know that? Look at John 15, verse 11. Let him turn while you're there. Look at 16, verses 23 and 24. And also look at John 17, verse 13. In chapter 15, verse 11, he says, That my, he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. He wants that fullness of joy. 16, verse 23 and 23, 24, he says, you haven't been praying. He says, pray. Ask me what you want. Amen. Ask me. Ask of me that you, that you may have my joy and fullness in your heart. Chapter 17, verse 13, that you may have my joy fulfilled in yourself. It's there. He wants that joy. Why? It's because it's the platform of right living. We have joy. We have a foundation that's sure and a foundation that's magnetic and a, and a way to grow really good and strong with joy. Proverbs says it well. Chapter 15, verse 13, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. A smile goes a long way, and the Lord gives us that smile. Verse 15, he says, a, he has a merry heart, has a continual feast. A continual feast. You find good in the situations, and of course, that's a promise from God, that in every situation there is something to give thanks for, and I'll touch on that in a minute. But it's important for us to realize that that joy is essential in Christian living. So we work at it. How do I pray all day long, every day long? Well, here's one project. Ask the Lord to show you, help you to build that joy, not only in your own life, but all around you. Amen. The next thing is there's a courtship factor in, uh, in our prayer lives. It's important. You've got to realize 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, you're espoused. As a chaste virgin unto the Lord. It's there in Isaiah 62. I'll not take the time. But Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5 says, The Lord thy maker is thine husband. What's the deal? The fact is we are in a divine courtship. In a holy romance. With the king of all the ages and the giver of life. They came to him frantically, tending to trip him up. And a young lawyer asks him, hey, where's it at? What's the key in Matthew chapter 22? He said in verse 22, 22 verse 9, 29, he says, you do err in not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And I'll say right now, people, we need the word of God more than ever before. And I'll say more on that a little later. But the fact is, Jesus said in chapter 22, verse 37, he says, you want to know where it is? I'm going to tell you, thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And the second commandment is like unto it. Share that love. Share it with the neighbor. And makes this astounding statement. Think about this. This is worthy of all contemplation. He said, on these two things hang all of the laws and the prophets. Here's where it's at. Loving Jesus. Do you remember when you were in courtship? You remember those days you walked up the door and opened up the stairs and you said your pajamas and you put on your prayers and you crawl <laughs> you turned out the light and crawl you turned out the light and crawled into the you turned out the steps and crawled into the light. <laughs> you remember that? How it was, how wonderful, the thrill, the excitement of just being together, of just being with that one you love. The Lord's looking for that in our lives. I love that song you sang today, dear girl. I love you because of who you are. And that's where it's at. 
Loving Jesus. Paul says in Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10, if you follow suit with this, this concept of life and love, you'll automatically, automatically, verse 10, fulfill the law. You look at the Deuteronomy run where in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, you want to know why there's a Ten Commandments? Verse 5 says it, so you'll be in love with Jesus. There's that courtship factor. The most important thing in your life is your Savior, Jesus. And Paul says, hey, being risen with Christ, Colossians chapter 3, let us seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. Verse 2, set your affections on things above, not on things of the world. And there's a bell ringer in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, where he speaks and says that the end of the commandment, the ultimate intention, the bottom line, the current underlying current of Christianity, right here, the bottom line, the end of the commandment is love. Right. Out of a pure heart, clear conscience, and faith on faith. Where do we go with that? I think a lot of our time when we pray all day, and all night should be in holy romance where we just speak our love to the Lord. I'm going to encourage you to try this. Driving down the street or shopping at the grocery store, wherever you are. Just look up in your heart and in your heaven. You're saying, Lord Jesus, wrap your loving arms around me. I want to feel your love. Hey, that's a legitimate prayer. In fact, I admonish you to do it. Just say, Jesus, let's love on each other. Let's be together. It works. It really does. You read the Song of Solomon, at first it might scare the daylight out of you, but the truth of the matter is it portrays more graphically than any other book in the Bible the love relationship God intends to have for you. And this little Shulamite girl comes back and says simply this, his desire is toward me. What a revelation. He really loves me. He really loves me. Loving Jesus like this is all that really matters. Am I so bold as to say that? I will say this, that the highest form of prayer is praise. Five-sixths of our prayer time, according to one of the great old saints of the early 1900s, he said should be in praise to the Lord. And it really makes sense when you think about it, folk. He said, I have knowledge of your need before you even ask in Matthew 6. He said, you're my project, daily project. I will meet your needs. Paul said it so well. Our sufficiency is of God. It really is. He meets our needs. David said in Psalm 31, 23, Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. What a statement of truth. Praying with your eyes open. Praying unto the Lord all day long. Not ceasing in prayer. How do you do it? Understand there are types of prayer. And I'll go briefly over this because I want us to spend some time in worship at the end. And I'll briefly say this. There is that prayer of supplication. And what supplication simply means, if you bring it down to bottom line, is pray like a beggar. That's what it means. That takes humility. And that is important to God. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. How do you do that? Verse 7, that was First Peter 5, 6. Verse 7 says, casting all your care on him, for he careth for you. That's released. You're saying, God, it's yours. I possess nothing. I give you everything. You're my master. That is a prayer of supplication. I always thought it meant to pray for somebody else, and that is important as well. You can pray for other people. Indeed, you can. Then there's that key factor, and this is foundational. People, let me tell you something I believe with all my heart. Don't even think 
about praying before the Lord without giving thanks to God. How many times you and I have said, Lord, I want to know your will. I want to know your will. Well, emphatically stated in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, it says, give thanks. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. Oh, Rock, that's, that, that, you, you said something that's a little difficult, but what did I say? You said, in everything? Hey, I, that's in the book. Ephesians 5.20 says, Give th giving thanks for all things. Come on. Does it really say that? Yes, it does. Why? Because in giving thanks and in for and in all things, you're going to see the Lord. You're going to have to see the Lord. You're going to have to see what he's wanting to do in your life, what he's wanting to add to your life as that difficult person or that hard time comes. And you do that when you give thanks. That pain in your body has a purpose. Give God praise for it. This thing is foundational. David grabbed onto this revelation. And he would say things like, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. He would say, too, from the rising of the sun, Psalm 113, verse 3, till the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. Psalm 145, he said, all thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of thy glory of thy kingdom and talk of your power. Wow. Wow. David would say in Psalm 119, verse 174, 164, somewhere there. <laughs> Read the whole chapter. It's only 175 verses long. He would say, I will give thanks to the Lord six times a day. That was discipline. It was something he determined to do. And these things that I'm talking about are just that. We have to make up our mind. Okay, if I'm going to be praying all day, he's giving me stuff to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to pray and keep my mind on God all day long. And here's some, th some things I can pray about and do. David said, itemize. David said, count your blessings. He said, name them. Name them one by one, just like the old song said. And he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And it's going to take this kind of grit, folk. If we're going to do this, if we're going to increase our prayer life, if we're going to pray all day, we're going to have to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and determine for it to happen. Yes. And all that is within me, and in my situation, that's a lot. <laughs> he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. All right, you help me with this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who, what? <laughs> that sounds good. He satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm waiting for that one, I'll tell you. <laughs> That's what our Lord wants. Crowneth thy life with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's what he does. So we can sit here now. We were working on all these things all through the day, thinking about this glorious God of ours who loves us so much, who wants to keep the lines of communication open with us. So we don't get shut out by distraction. And I'll tell you, there's an invasion of distractions right now. How many know that's a fact? An invasion. Have you ever seen so much invasion? Cybernetics has gone crazy. Television, 10,000, 20,000 channels available to you. 24-7. In beautiful color. <laughs> Am I thinking lovers of pleasure more than lovers of self? I'm telling you, you got to watch out. We've got to determine in our heart like David, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let's go on. I got caught up in that. I'm sorry. 
But uh, we, play with, we pray with uh, that intention of just watching for the good things of God. Please remember this. Write it down if you get a chance because it's an important portion of Scripture. Psalm 68, verse 19. It says, daily, with a capital D, he loadeth us with benefits, even the salvation of our Lord. Now, you heard the scriptures time and again say, watch, pray. They come together. When you watch, what are you watching for? You're watching for the Lord manifesting his blessings. We do this enough, we're going to start absorbing those blessings. We're going to catch on. Hey, every day God's got something new for me. Every day. Amen. We're going to catch on and say, this is glorious. I want it. I want it. What's happening here? You're taking in his strength and foregoing your weaknesses. And this is how we need to be living. Not in the weakness of our infirmity, but in the strength of our faith. Amen. That's God's intention for us. He wants you strong. He told Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Why should we do this? We can take on a whole new strength. I'm going to tell you about one other thing I do, and I love to do it, and it's what a way to fly. Have you ever heard of soaking? How many soak? I do it every morning, just about every morning. I sit back, I turn on either... Either I, I'm, I'm a real fan of the Collinsworth family. I think they're fantastic, fantastic. And our own Don Jones has got so much music on the, on the YouTube now. Did you realize that? He's got hours of music on that YouTube. And what a way to pray. He, that guy is so good. And I'm also a big fan of, of uh, the guy who's written 700 or more songs and some of the most worshipful songs I've ever heard, a guy by the name of Lanny Wolf. And that guy has written some of the most fabulous worship choruses I've ever heard. And that's what I do. Lay back and just soak in the glory of that wonderful music generating. It's fabulous. I encourage you to do it. Go for it. This is how we spend our time. With Jesus. Daily. We walk with him. And we talk with him. You know Oral Roberts was a tremendous man of prayer. And uh, a young man picked him up one day to take him to a, uh, a service. And they got to talk, and he found out that the young man was a pastor's son. And he was impressed with the young man, and they got to having a great conversation. And the young man asked him, he said, Brother Roberts, what was the oddest miracle you've ever seen? He'd seen a lot of miracles. But what was the oddest thing? He says, well, I hardly ever talk about it. I don't talk about it, really. But he said, the oddest thing I think I've ever seen was my loving wife Evelyn's plants. And he said, oh, he said, yeah. He said, I used to go into her little greenhouse in the backyard, and I'd pray. She soon noticed that my plants grew better. The plants grew better when I was back there praying. And it got to where when, my, when her plants started drying up, she'd tell me to go pray, and I'd go pray, and <laughs> he said, the plants got better. <laughs> he said, it was really something. He said, but you know, I wasn't praying for the plants. That's not what I was praying for at all. He said, but to the young man, he said this. He said, young man, listen to me. When you pray, listen carefully. When you pray, everything around you starts living. Jonathan Hyde, praying Hyde, sometimes spent five hours on his knees. But the story is told when Wilbur Chapman was holding a revival meeting, early 1900s, I believe it was. Chapman was known, he was famous for his wonderful preaching and his dynamic mannerisms, and he saw souls saved. But this meeting was tough. He said he had gone three weeks preaching his heart out. He said, three weeks, I preached my heart out. 
He said, I fasted, I prayed, I sought the Lord harder than I had in a long time. He said, nothing was happening. He said, one Sunday morning during the Sunday morning service, I happened to notice a small little man walk in the back door. He said, I couldn't take my eyes off the guy. He was unique. Never said a word. But he just walked in. Wilbur Chapman said, 50 people came to the Lord that morning. Things broke loose and they had glorious revival. He ran to catch that little guy. He said, who are you? He said, I'm Jonathan Hyde. He said, I want you to pray for me. They walked back in the nook in the church there. Jonathan Hyde just laid his hand on him. And he said, oh, God. That's it. <laughs> That's all he said. And Wilbur Chapman came out of there saying, my life was changed forever. Just by one man, so full of God, so connected with heaven, my life was changed forever. Jesus can do that, and I've spent more time than I want to. Come back to that piano, young lady. Maybe we'll get at some more another time. But uh, I wanted you to realize, people, you have the privilege of walking in the presence of Jesus 24-7. He was the one who said pray always with all prayer and supplication. I want us to do that tonight. I want us to get a start on it. I just want us to really praise the Lord. You are doing so wonderfully today. I haven't heard praise like that, Pastor, in a while. That was tremendous praise. If we can accelerate our worship, if we can do this, people, we're going to help our pastor in building this church because praise brings power. G.W. Midden was an evangelist that walked throughout the early 1900s and the later part of the mid-1900s. He said, I made an observation in all of the experiences I had. He said, where there was much praise, he was an evangelist. He said, I saw many miracles. He said, when there was very little praise, didn't matter what I did, how I prayed, or where I went, I saw very few miracles. He said, praise made the difference. If we can accelerate in our praise in this church, We'll be standing behind this guy 100% with glorious feelings and glorious results. Pastor, we'll show you miracles, but we'll see more miracles. And it'll be glorious. If we'll make that Saturday evening prayer meeting and get before God. And I say this with shamefacedness because I missed last week. I slipped right through it. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> but I know this, people. We're going to do it. Are you with me on this? Do you see the value of it? Are you encouraged to know that God wants you to spend time with him? 24-7. Keep the lines open, people. Keep the sufficiency coming for our sufficiency is of God. I have so many more scriptures to share with you another time, maybe. But let's stand and let's give God our praise and let's make that commitment. Let's see Jesus today. Let's see him today, helps. Hallelujah.
give you praise for the presence of the Lord is here. You're here. You're here. And you love us so much. Hallelujah. Wrap your loving arms around those who are discomfort. Help those who are sorrowing or grieving, Father. In the name of Jesus, lift them into your arms. Carry them through the difficult moments. Oh, we praise you, my Father. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 People, I can't begin to tell you how Jesus wants you to hear this message. Jesus wants your love. Jesus wants your affection. Jesus wants you. He loves you just as you are. And he'll bring you up as you allow him to what he wants you to be. And how happy you'll be when he does that. He's glorious. He's wonderful. What we're doing by way of praise to the Lord is so right. And you can go for it 24-7 if you want to. The one thing we've started to do, and I think we need to feed into that, we've been applauding for our Lord. He's worthy. Let's give the Lord a clap offering right now. Hallelujah. 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 My pastor may shoot me for this, but I think there's another area that you need to be glad because the scriptures say, clap your hands, all ye people, and... Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let's do it. Let's say hallelujah. 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 Let's say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Let's say glory to God. Glory to God. Ah, doesn't that feel great? <laughs> Pastor, come on. Thank you, Rocky. Good stuff. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so the praying hide when he died, they went into his room, and there were grooves in the wooden floor where his knees fit. His trousers were all worn at the knees, and the undertaker said he had huge calluses on his knees. Most of us have calluses on the backside. Prayer changes things. God wants us to pray. Thank you, Rocky. Great word here tonight. Praise the Lord. I want to stop and pray over the box. We've been praying over it every Sunday, but we've been missing it in here a little bit. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, <clears throat> we ask that every person in that box be saved. We ask you to save them. Send into their, their way people to touch them. Give them dreams. Give them visions. Touch them, God, as only you can. We thank you for their salvation. We bless you for it. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, raise your right hand. May God bless you with the strength to pray and the willingness to pray. And may praise and prayer continually fall off your lips. May God strengthen and bless you physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, and relationally. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you Saturday night at 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs>